just say I don't want to do Oh yeah, I forgot to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so go by it. It's not my duct tape. I don't mind. Like I don't mind. My mind. I can see the tape as well. Right. Oh, hey, yeah, here's the exam, too. It's awesome. <laughs> and Lennon, but there's a gay in the whole thing. Tyler, more plot than that. Yeah. Yeah. Not all. for everybody. Where's Phil go? You're right. Phil? Not the Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to believe I didn't fix it for him. What could I fix it with? I think, I think maybe some epoxy, maybe, and a couple splints. All right, here's the exams. Before I pass them out and you stop paying attention to me, let me tell you just a little bit about how I grade them, just so you can make sure if nothing else, the points went right. I don't want to total up things and have it come you come up short, so I want you to be able to check. Uh, when I grade, the way I do it is if I find something wrong, I take off a few points. That way I figure if I miss anything, it's to your benefit, rather than giving you points when I find something right, because then if I miss something, it's not to your benefit. So uh, I do one page at a time all the way through, so I'm more consistent that way. Then I come back to the front, and I go to the first one, and I go then through the second page all the way through that. That way, uh, after the first page, I don't know whose paper I'm grading by then, and I'm much more consistent because I keep doing the same problem over and over and over. So down at the bottom corner of the page is how many points you lost that page. Then when I'm all done with the test, I just go and look at the bottom on scores on uh, at the bottom corner of each page and take that off of 60 points. So just make sure that all those points work out. Not all the points were of the same weight and not even all the answers were the same way because on the multiple choice one I thought some of these there were there were wrong answers that were wronger than other wrong answers so so I if you if you were a little closer than being completely wrong I tried to give you a couple a couple extra points that way so it's out of 60 Where's Bill? And also make sure that the score I enter on Angel agrees with this. It's pretty easy uh, after entering a couple to type it up wrong. Don't, however, pay attention to Angel's calculation of the percentage total. I have no idea how it does that. Couple high fifties. Very. In fact, I don't think anybody was under forty, so that's good. And Samantha's on uh, unpaid holiday. Okay. Also, I will post a uh, full solution as soon as I figure out what the computer problems are I'm having. And so you can check to see what was the deal there. By full solution, I don't mean just the answer, but an explanation of why that's the answer. <coughs> Once you've taken a look at that and still have any questions, then just come see me. Usually, though, when you take a second to look at the solution, all the answers are cleared up. And you're no longer mad at me. So much for Samantha's optional day. I was thinking guess about she, it. Guess she's, well, the next time, a little harder. We can all use an optional day. Maybe I'll take an optional day. No 
good. What? I'm not really sure. I don't remember what we were just trying to figure it out. I'm not really sure either. Uh, your case, I was probably just angry. <laughs> And man, that's it. I don't have to justify this. Off come. I get out my big red pen. It looks like a cannon. That's one I use for the paper. Uh, check the solution. When I get it put up, I'll, I'll put it up right after this class. Check that. If you still don't get it, then you either bring it up in class, put it on the discussion board, or come see me. Um, was it in general okay? Nobody went overtime. So that was good. That's always a big worry that, that they're longer than I think they should be, but not out of line in terms of too easy, too hard, not fun enough, not talking to me, no eye contact. It was fun. It was fun. I'm a liar. It was fun. You need to get out more. <laughs> Talk to Andrew about fun. He'll tell you fun because he's going to Daytona for spring break. And it's going to take him at least two months to straighten his head out when he gets back. Probably come back not only tattooed, but married him. If not in jail. And then he wouldn't come back, would he? Of course, it could be flight. Anyway. All right, then everybody's okay. All right, so if you remember, we're looking at uh, what's in general called curvilinear motion. We're going to stick to mostly uh, planar motion or 2D motion. Everything we're looking at happens in a single plane. It may not be a vertical or a horizontal plane, but whatever it is, it remains in a single plane. Actually, projectile motion does remain in a vertical plane, uh, at least as we look at it as a free fall problem. Oh, well, that kind of came across on the test yesterday. What's free fall motion? It's a constant acceleration problem. We are ignoring air resistance. We'll see specifically how that comes into play, but some of the generalities on it were, were addressed in the book and were addressed on the test. Um, but we're looking at, at strictly 2D motion um, as we look at it here. We're going to bring up a new piece of it with, uh, with some stuff we're going to do today. So by way of introduction, let's imagine here we've got a car going a good 60 kilometers per hour. Is that fast? Is that what you guys do? You know, that's, might as well get out and walk. Uh, even in the parking lot, that, that's, it's not even worth, it's not even worth turning on the car to go 60 kilometers per hour. Except for reasonable adult human beings into a 90 degree corner comes out of the corner 60 kilometers per hour very simple even simpler than something don't leave that there. Don't go and get it now, but don't leave that there. No, I, I saw the trash can duck. I never did see it. Yeah. Uh, very simple problem. And all I have is a simple question. And shouldn't have any trouble doing this. Calculate the average acceleration. Dollar one. That's all I want. Simple question. Calculate the average acceleration.
just kind of a warm up. Uh, you know, we haven't been on any of this kind of stuff for for two days now. In fact, when we were doing projectile motion, the acceleration was constant in a single direction. wasn't even a big deal. We didn't even have to ca calculate it. I just gave it to you. Just said a equals minus g. Did I ask you to speak? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, that's what I was going to say. There, there a lot of people don't seem to be moving much. So either you already got it or you're completely stumped. So do this for me. When you've got it, think you've got it, quietly raise your hand. And you don't have to raise it real high because it could be up there a while while we're waiting for the rest. So we think you got it. Just uh, you know, a little secret signal, something to me. Let me know you got it. You think you got it. If not, keep going. We'll be we'll be with you in a minute. Anybody see Jeopardy with the IBM computer yeah. last night? I just read an article. Is that, that cool? Oh my god, is he kicking butt? I mean, it kicking butt. Didn't it have like 45 if, grand or if, something like that? It's yeah, he's up 36. And I want to know what the betting scheme is. You know, how he's figuring out what to do on double Jeopardy. It's probably easy. Well, no, he's not He's not very consistent. The first time he got, what is it called? Is, is, that's not Daily double. Is double. it double Jeopardy? Daily double. Uh, yeah, daily, daily double thing. And the first time he bet almost half of what he had, which was a good thirteen grand or something. Second time he bet like six hundred dollars. It didn't make any, you know. They didn't. They, I'm sure. I know those guys looked into it. You know, they called in gaming experts. I'm sure and strategizers and you know they had no. There was no limit to who they could call in to help with that. And then on the final Jeopardy. It was U.S. cities, which you'd think would have been a pretty easy one, and he bet nine hundred bucks, and, and he already had thirty-six thousand or something, and then didn't get it. Hey, oh, U.S. cities, he and put Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> yeah, because for each thing you can calculate this percentage chance that he's going to get it. Right. Yeah, yeah, but U.S. cities, you thought, boy, if he has doesn't have database on U.S. cities. Anyway, so there's I'll show on that about, about a week ago. Yeah, I've yeah, got a tape. I haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 really cool. It's really cool. And Monday, didn't I tell you Monday? My my elementary the the person to whom I lost the fifth grade president election was on cash cap. <laughs> Actually, I think it was vice president. She thinks it was president. So there's a little bit of controversy. Nobody's hands are up. That's why I was talking. Oh, there's a couple hands up. Ah, there's there's one. You can just wink at me or something. Okay. No? Can't lift it? Too heavy? Because it's broken still? Fine. You're not playing. Boycott. Well, I don't want to embarrass myself. Uh, embarrass yourself by what? Tell Raising you your hand? No there's no answer? The wrong answer. Oh, the wrong answer. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't say raise your hand when you have the right answer. Uh, I said raise your hand when you have a, an answer, or think you have an answer, or are under the impression you have the answer, or are, or are subject to personal self-delusion to the point where you think, and yeah, now Phil's hand goes up. I finally got to <laughs> So, okay, I'm ready. Hand up. No? Working? Joyce is up. Enters up. Mike's up. Len, Phil, Tyler. Thinking, thinking or stinking? We don't know which. Al's up. Samantha, you were up. You gave me a wink. Mark is up. So John, think you're the only... No, John and Tyler haven't done anything yet. They're either still working. You're done? Your hand up? No? Nope. Your brain shuts down. I'm done. Wow. Let's see your brain shut down. Did you hear it slam shut? All right, who's willing to venture the uh, answer? Bill? Phil is. Bill, thanks for volunteering. Uh, is this a triple acceleration problem? Or? Uh, it's a simple 
problem. Give me the average acceleration. You can't ask questions now. Your hand was up. So. Who's willing? You had the, you winked. Is he ready? Zero. Zero. You refuse to play? Zero. Zero. Uh, why? It can't be a Ebony, uh huh? It can't be a Zero. 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 You can't get it or no one can get it? Okay. Then your hand wasn't up because your brain shut down. And Mark, where were we with you? Zero. Zero. Oh, zero. Oh, a, a, a vector. A vector. See, I a little vector sign there. So, magnet. A vector of magnitude zero, but pointing up. Now that's. I, I, Gotta say, I don't know that I've come across that before. <laughs> I've come across zero vectors with no units, because when it's zero, it doesn't matter what the units are, but zero and up. Yeah. I like that. I'd draw it if I could. I guess I could put a dot. You just draw the arrow. I don't know what to do with them. Stop with that one. It takes me a long time. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, <laughs> See, Phil, you said can't tell with what's given. Somebody else said that too? Mike said that. Okay. <coughs> wrong. Sorry, but wrong. You can tell. We can figure this out. You said zero, zero, zero. You s well, I know it's not zero. But I you know, know it's not zero. Zero, zero, and zero. And you... Still nothing. Let's nothing. try for one. Nothing. One. One. There you go. That always works sometimes. One. Where's that always works. Tyler Dre. Tyler Dre. Not zero. He didn't know what it was. He knew it wasn't zero. It's not zero. It's not zero. Let's see if we can figure out why or why not. Uh, what's the definition of average acceleration? Louder. That was right. Change in V over change in T. All right. Change in V over change in T. Remember, average means we just take the the bulk. <coughs> excuse me. The, the the bulk change. We don't care what happened in between. We don't know necessarily what happened in between two time periods. We got a, a time here. Let's uh let's go ahead. We'll call that V one. We'll call this one V two. What happened in between, we don't know. But that's not what I asked about, so we don't even care either. So uh, I've got, I've got uh, the strict, the straight ad average acceleration, just like we defined it in that. In fact, I think we did that first week, right? Yeah. Something's missing, though. These aren't equal as written. Why not? No, no, this is average acceleration because it's the change in the velocity with time. Change in velocity, the rate at which velocity is changing is acceleration. But something's missing. Pardon me? Yeah, th they're not equal because this is a vector. has a little vector symbol. This doesn't, so i got to put that in there. Now they're equal. Now they're equal. What does, uh, oh, I forgot to give you, hey, Phil, I guess you were right, because I didn't write down everything you needed. <laughs> I didn't, I, I forgot. Uh, happens in five seconds. Is that what you were looking for? Why don't you just ask for it? Now, now you're ready to say zero? Yeah. No? When, when you take this again next year, I won't make that mistake. Okay? So, so you'll be ready to jump all over me again if I do. Uh, what's delta V mean? Change from velocity. Yeah, yeah, but what do I write next? So we can we can do some work here. 
V2 minus V1. Uh, change in the velocity vector, so it's V2 minus V1 over delta T. What is V2? The velocity vector 2. This is, this is actually the speed because I don't have a little vector symbol over it, but if we put it with the the direction, then I have magnitude, units, and direction. I got a full vector thing. So, what do I write down for V2? Right, right. Want to give it some direction. Uh, start with its magnitude and its units. But I want to give it some direction, so we'll use the unit vectors. And just to be exciting, we'll pick them in the usual direction, sort of our x, usual x, y direction. So this is 60 kilometers per hour, j hat. Positive? Yeah, positive. It's in the in the positive j direction that I drew. Minus, what is the vector v1 that I can write in there? Positive 60 i. Positive what? 60 i vector. Nope. 60 kilometers per hour. Oh, yeah, magnitude. Units, direction. That too. Uh, but positive. And that minus sign? He said positive, but I wrote minus. Yeah, that's that's from the definition of changing. That's we can't do anything about that. That's just that's just pure and beautiful algebra. All right, delta T. Uh, let's do this. Change the 60 kilometers per hour to meters per second, because I have time in seconds, so I don't want hours and seconds mixed together. So change that kilometer, 60 kilometers per hour to meters per second. Nope. idea that I need to hear the units? I said it. Lay, plus I'm just double check and see what other people think. See what lots of them What, Mike? Um, wow, that's not at all what they had. You guys said 67 or something, didn't you? 16.7. 16.7. He oh, says 217. No, so. so let's see if we can come to some kind of agreement. You say 17. We can round up. Anybody know how many kilometers per hour in a meter per second, or vice versa, right off the top of their heads? No. No, no, like it's off the top of their head. So, uh, what can we manage? Let's see. How many? Let's see, I got kilometers on the top, so I want kilometers on the bottom. The meters on the top. How many meters in a kilometer? Thousand. Thousand. So, if you look at the units, you don't have to worry about whether you divide or whether you multiply. They'll tell you what to do. We got to multiply. The thousands on the top. I got hours on the bottom. I want hours on the top, seconds on the bottom. How many hours in one second? Man, that, who knows that one? Uh, how many seconds in one hour? 3,600. 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 60 times 60 is 36. Whoops. So 
now I know I don't divide. I mean, I don't multiply 3,600. I divide. Uh, so 60 times 1,000 divided by 3,600 is... No, not 16 and 2 thirds. We're engineers. We got real work to do. Give it to me in the decimal. 16. I don't want, we don't. 16 and 2 thirds. 16 and 2 thirds, sir. 16 and 2 thirds. 16.7 meters per second. Why don't you say that in the first place? All right. 16.7, known in uneducated points in the world as. 16 and 2 thirds. Oh wait, uh, divided by the 5 seconds. Let's go ahead and put that in. So we'll have the acceleration then in meters per second squared. 16 and 2 thirds divided by 5 is... Thanks Mark. Appreciate you bringing a calculator and then actually using it. Because see Joey did it but won't talk to me. Three point three four meters per second squared. And that's the same on both, so I'll just factor that out, leaving behind J minus I, is that right? Is all that algebra okay? Double check it. Right, we got the 60 you have and to the keep 5 it. and all that pulled out to the front to here. That, and I'm trusting Mark. Anybody check him? He's right, okay. It's left behind the J minus I. You have to keep the, the vectors oriented that way. I mean, why would you I J? It doesn't matter, right? That's just 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 the way it was. If we want to we want to turn it around. Oh my goodness! We can't have a, a commercial thing on on screen on tape. They're not sponsoring this class. They might have to see it. <laughs> there, take that for not giving me free coffee today. Uh, simple simple algebra. If we wish. To spin around. No difference. No difference. Uh, just sometimes people don't like to lead with the minus sign. Sometimes they do. Sometimes people want to lead with the I and then the J and then the K if they got them. No trouble. Either way. Either way was right. All the information was there. Uh, let's draw that. Let's draw that acceleration vector. Um, 3.34 meters per second in the minus i direction. So, uh, where will I put it? I can, do, I can put it about anywhere, I guess. So, I'll put it here. There's 3.34 meters per second squared in the minus i direction. Is that right? So that's 3.34 meters per second squared minus I direction. That's the first component. <coughs> Second component, 3.34, oh, same length, plus J direction. So I'll put that on here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty close to the same length, 3.34 meters per second squared in the plus J direction. Is that right? That's what we got here and everybody was happy up to here. So all I'm doing now is drawing this. Here it is analytically, here it is graphically. So if I add those two vector components together, I get something like that. Tyler is right. Wasn't zero. Phil and Mike were right. 
because at the time they answered, I didn't have all the stuff on the board. I'd forgotten to put the five, per, five seconds there. But everybody else is evidently thinking, no matter what the time, it's zero. But that's definitely a non-zero acceleration. Isn't it? That's not zero. That's definitely non-zero. I don't get it. The speed did not change. How come there's acceleration? If you were going around, say the 60 kilometers per hour was on the speedometer all the way around, that needle didn't budge the whole way around the corner. You ask any dope out on the street, and there's no shortage of them, were you accelerating around that corner, they're going to say, no, didn't, no, the needle didn't budge. I wasn't accelerating, I wasn't decelerating. How come we don't agree with the dopes out on the street? One, because we rarely do, just on principle. Why isn't this acceleration zero? The needle did not move. Is it from the G-force that took when it took the turn? <laughs> we haven't talked about force yet in this class at all. Don't, don't, don't throw that at me. You can answer this without skipping ahead in the book a couple chapters. No? Change in direction. Positive. This is a change in the velocity vector. The dope out on the street is thinking change in speed. That doesn't work for us. This is change in the velocity vector. If anything about the velocity vector changes, we have acceleration. If the magnitude changes, we have acceleration. Well, it didn't here. If the direction changes, which is as much a part of any vector as the magnitude is, if the direction changes, we also have acceleration. Sometimes both change. Maybe went in at 60, came out at 45. Then both direction and magnitude change. And that's most certainly acceleration. In this case, we just happen to have a change in direction only. Anytime we have a change in direction, we have a change in vector, we have non-zero acceleration. So, to us, to, to those of us who are infinitely smarter than the dopes out on the street, and by the way, they'll have access to this video. So when we're done here, I'd appreciate it if everybody filed past, got their face on camera when they left the room today. Just help me a little bit. Anytime there's a change in the velocity vector, we have accelerated motion. We need to be more precise. We need to be more complete because well, we're figuring out how the world works. They're, not, they're out there in philosophy classes where anything works. You could say, uh, God is the great spaghetti monster, and that'll fly. Does everybody know about the great spaghetti monster? Oh, yeah, Google spaghetti monster, and you will find a religion that you can get your, your hands around. That one there, that's a good one. Great spaghetti monster. Can you Google that on here first? That'd be a big help. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's let's take this a little bit farther. Make sure we know what we're working with here. Let's be a little bit more complete. All right, so we just had uh, average acceleration, delta V, the change in the velocity vector, and 
we had that over here in this case. Uh, Do when we first talked about average acceleration, what did we do next? About three weeks ago, I introduced average acceleration and we almost immediately went to what next? Instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration. Just like we did with Just like we did with velocity too, we went from average velocity to instantaneous velocity, but then we did that the same thing with acceleration. Um, how did we? Uh, how do we? How did? How do we define instantaneous acceleration? The change yeah, the, it's the exact reason I needed you to have taken calculus before you came here because we had to do this limit as delta t goes to zero of that average acceleration which is the derivative with respect to time it's exactly the type of problem that Leibniz and Newton were trying to answer um, if you druther don't forget, we can use this dot notation if you wish. Um, notice every single little piece on either side of the equal sign is a vector. Otherwise, they wouldn't be equal. I can't have a vector equal to something that isn't a vector. It's not, that's not a rule I made up just to be anal. Yeah, I know, I am anal. You know, I'm an engineering professor. Goes with the territory. But... That's just the deal. These things can't be equal if that any part of these aren't vectors if one part is. They just can't be equal. So watch that kind of stuff as we go through here. Um, we really got some stuff coming up where uh, a lot of you are going to forget that you're working with vectors at every single little point. And you're going to screw up. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to avoid screwing up. Um, now, uh, the next step on this, on what is the instantaneous acceleration, the acceleration at any little point we could have taken along here, even if that 60 kilometers per hour didn't hold at every single little spot. All we know is when in at 60 kph came out at 60 kph. Maybe it did something else in between. We just don't even know doesn't even matter because we can take an instantaneous acceleration at any possible point that was coming up and we would be able to figure out an instantaneous acceleration if we knew some more about the motion that was going on there which we will in a second when we get to it in greater detail uh, this is worked out in the book what this deal is turns out to be V squared over R, <coughs> where V is the instantaneous velocity. Uh, we, if we did go around here, you could look down at your speedometer needle at any instant. You'd know what the instantaneous velocity was. That's what your speedometer reads, instantaneous velocity. Look down for an instant, there it is. So that's the instantaneous velocity. Doesn't say V average, it just says V divided by R, which is the radius of the corner. It was a nice 90 degree circular radius turn. <coughs> Any trouble with this equal sign? Anybody about to howl in protest? Yes, sounds like Alan is. No vector. That's not a vector there. There's there's no no nothing here to make it a vector. What should I do? Should I put a vector sign over the V? 
I can't. There's no such thing as the square of a vector. There's, it just doesn't exist. It's, it's not that it's beyond your mathematical capabilities. It isn't. It's not there. It doesn't exist in this world. There's no such thing as the square of a vector. So I don't want a vector sign over the V. So I've got to do something else because it turns out the direction of this is always changing. And some of you have already figured out where we're going with this. In fact, it almost came up a second ago. Was it Phil? You, I think you said it. So you know where we're going with this. So what I'll do is say it's towards the center of the circle. That's the best I can do because every place, every different place along here has a different direction towards the center because it's going around this corner. So I can't say I or J because it doesn't always work. But I can say towards the center because you can find the center of the circle, the center of the corner, and so we've got a directional component to it. The derivation of that is worked out in the book. So I'm not going to repeat it here. It's, it's not terribly complicated. It's just, uh, it's just not that productive to go through it for the, for the sake of showing it. So, let me introduce then our next major topic. We're going to look at circular motion, things going in circles or portions of circles, like we just looked at. That was a one quarter portion of a circle. We're going to look at circular motion. Oh, careful now when you write this down. Stop, Mike. See, I left some space in here. We're going to look at circular motion. Um, a lot of what we've been doing last, especially the last couple weeks, we looked at projectile motion and, and, and just general motion, some curvilinear motion, some rectilinear motion, like, and it was always helpful if at any time we could identify what things were constant, what things weren't changing as we were talking about them. What then, in that mindset, defines a circle? If, can I say something's constant, something's not changing, or something's changing always in the same, or something like that that I can say that helps us define a circle? Of course I can. What is it? Somebody. Center. What's a circle, huh? The center. No. What's constant in a circle? Huh? The radius. The radius is constant. That's a circle. R equals constant. Not the first time I've written down something like this. It's helpful. It helps us. Uh, uh, what it does for us is it helps us get rid of, uh, of of some of the problem because the less stuff that's changing, the more stuff that isn't, and then it's easier, a little bit easier than to grasp. So, uh, circular motion, R equals constant. Yeah, well, of course, of course. That, that makes perfect sense. All right, you've got to draw a circle on your paper at least as good as that. That's not too bad. That's a good one. Joey, not too bad. Oh, dear. Oh, well, your hand's broke. <laughs> yeah. It's, not, it's easy to do it when they're tiny. <laughs> And I, but you're you're out. Oh, I forgot to Oh, what is that? Oh, where's you? You're in a. You could have used your chair. Oh, got to turn that side down. Oh go man. Like <laughs> oh, what you? Not bad. Not bad. Samantha, not too bad. Not willing to give it a try. <laughs> Yours is invisible. It's a yeah. It's a, it's a snow snow circle in the art. So there's our circle. An object with constant radius. 
So we're going to need to know where the center is, of course, because then that's where our radius is. So uh, we're going to look at things going around in circles or in portions thereof. We don't have to go through the full circle to, to talk about what we're talking about here. But I want to put a little bit more in it here to, to be a little bit more specific about what we're talking about. Let me add uniform. Uniform circular motion. UCM. That's our, our last point of focus for uh, our, our two-dimensional motion. What's uniform mean? No, no, I already got radius is constant here. That's circular. So it's got to be something else. It's the same circular motion. Huh? It's the same circular motion when it's not changing. Oh, so it's R equals constant is constant? <laughs> the direction, like the object is facing, isn't changing. It's always heading the same path. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. If this was, if there's a, it would be a boring one, but if this was a racetrack. Uh, yeah, the racetrack doesn't get up and walk away. No. Oh, wait. How is... She said velocity is constant. I said no. Alan said speed is... Why aren't those the same? Velocity has direction. Velocity has direction. So this is... Speed is constant. Is that what I just wrote down? You two don't agree again. You gotta get married to disagree so consistently. <coughs> yes? No? Did I just write down the speed is constant? Well, not in those words, but in words we understand, did I write down the speed is constant? Yes, I did. Because there's no vector sign here. So I'm not concerned with direction, I'm only concerned with magnitude and units if we had the actual numbers in there. So the speed is constant. Now what do I write down? Change. Uh, equals to greater than less than not equal to. Uh, what else could I write in there? The change in velocity. No, I'm not going to write down the change. I only got a little tiny space. What am I going to write down in there? Huh? Not equal to. There's one vote. Not equal to. There's two. Alan, did you check with Samantha first so that you two wouldn't disagree? You're on your honeymoon after all. Len, what do you say? What should I put in there? Not Joey? I lost my I want to know what to put in here. There's a there's a gaping maw there. M A W. I say Google that. I say equal to John? <laughs> the velocity isn't constant. The speed is, the velocity is not. So let's take a particular instant. We'll, uh, we'll take We'll take this one we've got right here just because the radius sign happens to be pointed there. So there's something, whatever it is, going in uniform circular motion at that instant its velocity would look something like this. At that instant Does 
that mean it's departing from the circle and the radius is no longer constant? No, because an instant later, by the way, that's how big an instant is, in case you didn't know. An instant later, it's now going like that. So it's still on the circle. So R is still a constant. Is the velocity constant? No, no. The velocity is not constant. Is the speed constant? Yeah, that's, I haven't erased that. It's up there in ink. Uh, what do I have to draw to make the speed constant? Or can I? Can I even draw the speed being constant? Here's a little sketch. There's the velocity vector. Back, we'll go ahead and we'll call that V1, that V2. Some amount of time went by. Uh, we'll let that get real, real small. So we're talking about instantaneous. What do I have to draw so the speed is constant? Or can I even do that? I can do it. In fact, I don't think I did too bad a job showing the speed is constant. No? Uh, no. Andrew, what? The vectors are the same length. Yeah, the, the magnitude of these vectors are pretty darn close to the speed, the same length. Not bad for a, a sketch cartoon at the board. Uh, remember, the magnitude oh. represents speed. The magnitude and direction represents velocity. So the speed being constant, same magnitude, is the velocity constant. No, the direction's changing. Even though the magnitude isn't what the direction is, and that's a change in the velocity vector, that's accelerated motion. Anything that happens at that velocity vector is acceleration. I don't care if it gets longer, I don't care if it points in a different direction, I don't care if it does both. Any change whatsoever in the velocity vector is accelerated motion. In fact, uh, an even tighter definition of circular motion is any motion where the velocity is always perpendicular to the radius, which it would be for circular motion, anytime the velocity is always perpendicular to the radius, you have circular motion. <coughs> As we go anywhere, we get some other velocity vector, but same magnitude. And even though it's way over here, it's still perpendicular to the radius. So uniform circular motion is this business going on all the time, but the magnitude of those velocity vectors never changes. Not anywhere, not know how. Magnitude is always the same. Uh, we don't consider a change in units necessarily to be a change of vector, because that's just a simple conversion. We're going to leave these in the same units. That would be all kinds of trouble to draw if we're drawing different units from the same drawing. That's that's, you got to be knucklehead to do that. We're not. So we know that uh, that the uh, we've already worked out the instantaneous acceleration for uniform circular motion is v squared over r. towards the center. That's a vector. This isn't until I give it direction. So I'll say towards the center. Huh? 
actually there is. And if and when you take a course we call dynamics, we'll have a unit vector that always points towards the center. See how that's different than our I, J, K unit vectors? They never change direction. But a unit vector that always points toward the center, the unit vector itself is always changing direction. So that's a that's a different different calculation to make, and we'll do that if you take uh, the course we call dynamics that I'm actually doing this spring right now. So we can draw in the acceleration vector. It's a different vector, so I'll draw it a different color, but it's always towards the center. So I'll label it A. Don't you wish? You, oh, look! Some, nah, see, Samantha's got colors there. She's she's working the magic. Yeah, Joey's going for some colors. What do you got in there, Joe? Pencils. Yeah. He looked over and saw the neat highlight, pink highlighter, and thought, "Hmm, can you? I need something to eat." Um. All right, here's the next question here. We're talking about uniform circular motion. Laid out a lot of detail already. We're ready to take another vote. Do I need you to put your head down on your desk for this vote so there's no cheating? No? We, we can trust you to vote honestly. Is this up? Well, let me, let me ask a preliminary question first. Um, how big is, what's the magnitude here of the acceleration vector? No, it's not equal to the radius. The radius is a distance. The acceleration is an acceleration. It couldn't have the same magnitude. I mean, they, they could travel the same length, but they're completely different vectors. V squared over R. Magnitude is V squared over R towards the center. V squared over R towards the center. V squared over R. Oh, yeah. Got it there. All right. Here's what I want you to vote on. Is this a constant acceleration problem? Because if so, that sheet of constant acceleration equations comes into play. That tattoo you got is still good. Is this a constant acceleration problem? Think about it for 10 seconds. Get ready to vote. No cheating. No peaking. Well, Mark is sitting in front. Nobody will look at it. Is me? <laughs> About ready to poke his eyes out. All right. So, so that nobody's speaking, you can do this right in, right in front here. Say one finger and no, you're not allowed to choose whichever one finger you wish. One finger if you think it is constant acceleration. Two fingers if you think it's not constant acceleration. Three fingers if you can't tell. Four fingers if you don't want to play along. No fingers. If you're getting tired of voting, I guess. You got one if it's constant acceleration. One if it's constant acceleration. Two if it's not. Three if you can't tell. Four if you abstain, which doesn't make any sense because you just voted, which is not a, not abstaining. So anybody who votes for us, Got some explaining to do. Go ahead, vote. One or two. Or three. And I'm watching which finger, if it's one finger. What's that? Is that a vote? Or is that a. Yes. I'm cool. What'd you do? I got a two. I got a two. Who else did two? Len, what'd you do? 
you didn't see it. So I had three twos, no, I had four twos, and all the rest ones. Patrick, you said two. That, what was the two vote? Two, just to make sure we, two was, two, you voted two. I was going to say four, but you to, oh, wait, wait. Two was, two was this is not a constant acceleration problem. Is that right, Phil? Is that what two was? This is not a constant acceleration problem. Is that what two was, right, Joey? So you're changing to one? You're changing to one. <laughs> Let him. Maybe, maybe he's gone to the dark side. So you thought? So I only have two people sticking with two. Joey and Phil, since there's only two of you, and you think it's not a constant acceleration problem, explain it to us. Why would you vote that? You, you two can talk. If you, do you have his cell phone number? Why don't you give him a call? Because I want to hear the answer. I just asked you. That's your reason? <laughs> it's not the reason for them. I figured that just because direction is changing, but now acceleration has really involved direction. Isn't it? Let's see. The question here is A. Constant. I want to know what to put in between there. You guys, you two guys are saying a not equal sign. Everybody else said equals. Even the two that jump ship. Right? You say not equals. And why? Because the direction's changing? He says no, it's not. So you're jumping ship. <laughs> it's just you, Joe. You going to stay there? Yeah. Double down. <laughs> Joey says... Double down. <laughs> Joey says that. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, that's what I say. It's always been my philosophy as a teacher to never purposely put anything on the board that's wrong. And I just put that up there, didn't I? So I agree with you, Joe. Really? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, pal. Voting poof is closed. The pressure was just too intense. Joe, what changes? If it's not constant, that's because something's changing. What's changing? Direction. Direction. It's pointing in that way here. It's pointing in a different way here. It's pointing in a different way here. And in fact, over here. Over here, it's pointing in the exactly the opposite direction it was pointing in first. That sounds to me like a change in a vector. So this is not a constant acceleration problem. But it's always for the center. That's right. The center is always in a different direction from where it is at any instant. It's a technicality. Not a technicality, a reality. <laughs> if, if uh, let's say you're on this big circular track, and when we're on Earth, we like north, east, south, and west, so there's north and east, and you're at this position here, and your mom says, quick, look at the center. You would look at about uh, 45 degrees south of west, wouldn't you? Then a little bit later, you're over here and your mom says, quick, look at the center. Are you going to again look 45 degrees south of west? The center's not there. It's in a different direction. It's now over here. What is that? South of east. You get to here. What's your mom say? No, she's not going to say quick look at the center. She's given up on you. 
Joey's the only child she loves anymore because he's the only one who knew where to look. All the rest of you are looking out the wrong window. Only Joey knows the center is in a different place now. What a lot of you were thinking is that the car we're in is going around chip. But what did I tell you about the direction in which the objects <coughs> we're talking about are facing? Huh? The no? I said it doesn't matter. We're talking, this is all particle motion we've been talking about for a couple weeks here. And it never matters in which direction the object is facing. So, you can't say, but but it's always out the same window. Because we don't know what the car is doing. That's not our concern here. We're way out in outer space looking down. All we see for the car is a little point. A little point is going around the circle. Well, points don't have windows. So the center is always off at a different direction. This vector, if we describe this acceleration vector in I and J notation, that I, J notation would constantly change. The I, J notation for this vector would be very different than the I, J notation for this vector. Because it's a different vector. It's changed. The magnitude's always the same. The direction's always changing. Better toward the sun. Huh? Analogy. But that describes it perfectly. But that doesn't say from where. From where it is. That's what I always drew. You never questioned it. We're talking about this object accelerating, so what's the acceleration vector from that object? Alan? Huh? Um, with velocity, we have speed to represent velocity without direction. How do you represent acceleration without direction? Is there a very easy. Take off the vector sign. Okay, so you just took all acceleration. Yeah, it doesn't have a new name like velocity and speed does. Velocity and speed are, are everyday concepts. Every everybody's got at least a feeling for velocity and speed. But remember when I we first started talking about uh, acceleration, I told you it's a lot less intuitive than velocity is. So we don't have some other word that describes uh, acceleration magnitude without direction. Maybe it'd help if we did, but we don't. So that's a, uh, and, and some books would do that kind of thing. You're okay to do that if you want. I think it's easy enough just to take off the vector sign. Our book does bold face for vectors. If you haven't noticed, I hope you have. If you haven't, you haven't opened your book yet, and that explains a lot of things. Uh, I can't do bold face at the board, so I do a little vector sign. So, um, this is a non-constant acceleration motion, but it is constant speed, and it is constant radius. All right, here we go, a little problem. A little problem to go with it. Uh, uh, Top Gun pilot. You, everybody knows Top Gun is the, 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 the Navy fighter jet pilots. Some who go on to become overweight brothers-in-law, who we hate. Well, you know who my brother-in-law is? <coughs> Do you? No. no? No, nobody knows who my brother-in-law is? My brother-in-law is an astronaut, actually an ex-astronaut. He, he quit uh, about a year ago. Been up on the space shuttle twice. Been up on the space station for six months. Six happy months of my life, I'll tell you. Because do you know what it's like for me to go see my in-laws and go to a dinner party with them and they introduce me, oh, here's our son-in-law. And everybody goes, oh, the astronaut. And my father-in-law says, no, he's a professor. And they all go, eh, and walk away. You know what it's like for me? It sucks. 
<laughs> but I'm not bitter. <laughs> huh? This is really fat. In my mind, yeah. No, he's fat. He's, they kicked him off the spaceship. And they opened the door. <laughs> Alright, so here's here's uh, here's what the top gun pilot can do. Comes in in uh, his fighter jet going, let's say, 400. No, let's do the, let's see. Where's the number? Uh, we'll say about 640 meters per second. Uh, we'll change that in a little bit. Goes into a circular loop. Not too bad. It's not too bad. We'll leave it. Does one 360 degree loop on a circle we'll say is uh, we'll say is about 5,000 meters. We'll change that in a, a little bit too, but that for now is good enough. Goes in, does one full loop, takes 48 seconds to do that full loop. Uh, all the way around. So this is V1, comes out. Forty-eight seconds later, having just done one full loop, and I don't care if it was a it was a, a vertical loop or it was a horizontal loop run. None of that matters. It's just the circle, and he went in at six forty, came out at six forty, shown just like that. Forty-eight seconds later. Calculate for me Was that a ringtone? <laughs> Is that what that was? I'll run the tape back. I'll find out what that was. Mike, you're redder than anybody else. Find out for me the average acceleration. When you're done, just look up, raise your hand, somehow indicate to me you're finished working. Put down your pen, do something, let me know you're all done. Find out for me the average acceleration. Nobody done yet? Man, you should all be done. Anybody done yet? Alan's done. Andrew's done. Len's done. Bill, you'd be done if Len had let you copy. Come on, Len, be a sport. Let him cheat. Could be your all day. Yeah, I know. Should all be done. In fact, you should not only be done, you should have been done quite some time ago. In fact, this full calculation you should have been able to do in your head instantly. Am I right, Alan? Did you do it almost instantly? Almost instantly. Yeah. Len? Len just threw it in reverse. Mike, what? What are you thinking? Andrew, what do you think? <laughs> Anybody got it? Yeah. The average acceleration he said zero and what's my what did I say my philosophy as a professor was I'll never do what I'll never huh right on the board if it's wrong. yeah I'll never write anything on the board if it's wrong how can how in the no wait a second how Mike Explain to me how the average acceleration is zero. Because he's ended up in the same direction at the same speed from where he started. Is that the definition of average acceleration? Yeah. 
Was there a change in the velocity vector? Yes. It was 640 meters per second in that direction. It's now 640 meters in that direction. Meters per second in that direction. Was there a change in the velocity vector? Nope. There wasn't. The average acceleration was zero. Uh, doesn't make any, I don't know how to make the zero vector. There you go. I don't know what that means. What is the instantaneous acceleration? Who's got the instantaneous acceleration? That's pretty quick. Andrew, what is it? Uh, I got 81.92 meters per second squared. Wrong. Alan? Zero. Wrong. Mike? Uh, 82 meters per second squared towards the center. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Which instant? <laughs> Doesn't matter, they're at the same place. They're different instants in time, but they're at the same place. So, you, you, what'd you say, Mike and or Andrew, now that Andrew's on board? Um, it's 81.92 meters per second. 81, we'll just call it 81.9 meters per second squared. Where? Towards the center. Towards the center. Why not zero, Alan? Because it's changing direction. There's the instantaneous acceleration. There's its magnitude. There's its direction. That's not zero. Because it has a that's its instantaneous velocity. And that's not infinite. That's the only way that, that could be zero. Alright, so. Here's uh, here's what you get to come back with. This will be your ticket of admission on Monday. Same thing, slightly different. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more detail. Let's say now that the velocity is. Four hundred I plus five hundred J meters per second. That turns out to be still about the six hundred and forty meters per second magnitude. And then twenty four seconds later, that was half of the forty eight around the whole turn. It comes out only does half the circle this time. So now it's coming out with minus 400. Minus, oh sorry, minus 400i minus 500j meters per second. I'm not going to tell you the radius this time. I want you to find for me the instantaneous, the magnitude of the instantaneous acceleration at any time. We'll assume it goes with that uh, 
constant speed, uniform circular motion. So you, I want the magnitude of the acceleration. We already know it's always towards the center, so we don't need to do anything with the direction. Then we just have to sketch that whenever we need it. So, you don't have that, don't even bother coming on Monday. That'll be your ticket of admission. And I'll be punching tickets. All right, I'll post the exam solutions. If there's any questions after that, let me know. Wow, it's been a rough day. No prisoners.